how a criminal became the drift king. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Looking around YouTube today, you'd think that the practice of drifting is as old as racing cars itself. But the sport of delicate balance and complete anarchy of smoke, shredded tires, and dead. Wait, how long has racing cars been a lot, like around? Can't be, it couldn't have been that long, right? Dented fenders hasn't always been around. It's relatively new, in fact. Oh. Drifting is dancing with horsepower, battling with fenders, and singing with exhaust notes and tire smoke. It's driving, but a little bit over dramatic. You know, sort of like this channel. Despite the art of oversteer invading everything from Pixar to PlayStation, its roots are humble and centered around one man. A man who rose from rebellious teenager street racing in the quiet hours of Japan's winding toge to a world-class driver standing atop podiums around the world. Someone who changed the world by turning his wheels in the other direction, took risks others weren't willing to take, and left a legacy that will last for generations to come. This is the story of Keichi Tsuchiya, the Drift King. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. Is Initial D based off of him? Oh, well, we're probably gonna find out, right? We're gonna find out, right? The story of Keichi Tsuchiya begins in 1956 Ooh. in the small village of Tomi. There, Tsuchiya-sama was born. Rumors have it that he came out of the womb sideways. Aye, bruh. The town of Tomi was long known for its hot springs, its beautiful landscapes, but most importantly, its proximity to winding roads known as toge. In the late 1960s, you might find Datsun 510s and Honda S600s attacking the nearby curves of Yusui Pass late at night a 7.5 mile narrow mountain road over bridges, hairpins, and sheer cliff Jeez. edges. Late at night, populated by drivers clamoring to be the fastest on its many winding passes. Their name was Hashiria, motoring enthusiasts that emerged in the 60s and 70s of Japan, taking their love of driving to the streets, hills, and raceways of Japan's diverse blacktops. Young Keiichi would Ooh. sit awake at night, listening to the roar of engines echoing through the hills as they battled at night. I ain't gonna lie, those cars that they showed, they're ugly dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry for all the car enthusiasts out there, but I, I think they are ugly. I'm sorry. I never find those cars good looking in my opinion. I think they're just ugly. That isn't me though. That is me. Takashi, otherwise known as Kunisan, that thing is huge actually. When you was look truly at the father of drifting. A man whose motorsports career is as impressive in its wins as it is in its diversity. Kunisan started out as a motorcycle racer in the late 1950s, rising through the ranks to earn a spot on the Honda Speed Club factory team, where he rode his 250cc Honda over the finish line to become the first Japanese rider to win the West German Motorcycle Grand Prix in 1961. A year later, he would attempt the absurdly dangerous Isle of Man TT, a blisteringly fast motorcycle time trial run on public streets that has claimed the lives of over 150 riders. Why, why would they shoot at? Why would they show that? But hey, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. They're better than me. I would never attempt something like this. That is out of my range. That is out of my. That is out of my forte. But like a hundred lives, though, is it? Like, let's be honest, chat. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it, is it honestly worth it? Uh, if it clings a hundred lives, I don't think it is. There, somewhere amongst the 219 turns around the town of Douglas, Kunisan loses control of his Honda 250 and the ensuing accident nearly takes his life. While mm. control of his Honda 250, and the ensuing accident nearly takes his life. God, Lee, bro, what? That will keep me off the track personally, bro. While recovering from his heavy injuries, Jesus. Kunimitsu is forced to reconsider whether racing on two wheels is even worth it anymore. Luckily, at the time, Nissan had learned of his dominating performance on motorcycles, and offered him a spot on their factory team in 1965. Of course, it'll be and Nissan. With that, the leather jacket of Ryder Kunimitsu was hung on the wall for the rest of time. As a driver for Nissan, he set many lap records in their prototype race cars, such as the R380, the R381, and the R382. But it would be his outings in the Huxka GTR that would not only earn him trophies, 
but the love of an entire nation of motoring fans. Cheers. In the early 70s, Kunisan found himself in the cockpit of the Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. With the spirit of competition burning in his heart, he came to win. But his tires were absolute garbage. And he wasn't alone. Everyone's rubber struggled to keep grip. You see, tire technology in 1970 was way behind the power and dynamics of the racing cars they were fitted to. Lee. So you couldn't really rely on them to maintain grip as you attacked a turn or stay yeah. in control as you accelerate out of an apex. What this meant was that most drivers would go very slow in and timidly accelerate out of a corner to maintain traction. Kunisan, whose bravery had been forged by years of two-wheeled death traps, had a different approach. Instead of meekly feathering the throttle and abiding by the limits of his tires, he would just press the accelerator firmly, aim at the corner exit, initiate a four-wheel slide, and just wait for his tires to give him the traction he needed to accelerate out. The result was essentially drifting. Oh, wait, did he actually? No way. Did he actually have it drifting? There in the 1970s, among the onlookers watching with eyes wide open and jaws agape, was a young Keichi Tsuchiya, who would forever be inspired by Kunisan's outlandish driving style, and who would- Wait, hold on, hold on. Actually, I'm very curious. Who invented drifting? We gotta look it up. Who invented- Invented drifting. So he was- Okay, so- So, Takahashi was the foremost creator of the drifting techniques he was an inventor but he was the he was he was the one who made the techniques oh okay 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 that's neat that's... see 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 guys this is why y'all need to know that history all right this is why you guys need to know history because this is cool this is cool i know a lot of you guys are probably sitting here probably doesn't probably don't even know about drifting i just think oh yeah drifting is cool but i don't know who invented it you know, goat right here invented drifting, and then he made you know Takahashi, you know the goat right here. He made the techniques, and then you got the proto J, KG, who became the king. That's why history is cool. Would quickly start saving for a car of his own, so that he too could slide his car through corners, not on a racetrack, but on the dangerous mountain passes of Japan. <laughs> I gotta make a joke, bro. You know what they say. Milkman knows milk best. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Following the absolutely massive success of the Huxka GTR, Nissan released its KPGC 110 GTR, aka the Ken Mary. It is one of the greatest and rarest cars Japan has ever created. And somehow, according to Tsuchiya, it was his first car. Ah. Look, I know, everyone everywhere quotes Tsuchiya-sama as starting from some humble beginnings. But driving one of the 197 Kenmeri GTRs as his first car triggers the sus in me a little bit. Other accounts say that his first car was the Nissan Sunny B110. Either way, whatever car Tsuchiya did start in, he didn't dive headfirst into racing. In fact, at first, he refused to compete with others. After seeing how treacherous and tight the Yusui Pass was, he opted instead to drive out to remote farmland and practice his driving technique on the weekends right. for four whole years. Hey, he was locked in for four years, bro. He was like, let me cook, let me cook. I'll come back in four years, let me cook, let me cook, let me cook. He came back in four years. My man was cooking. Braking, heel towing, and counter steering until he had a connection with the car that was absolute. See? After spending what is honestly cooking. an absurd amount of time practicing, Tsuchiya finally felt it was time to take on the Yusui Hashiriya. Keiichi made short work of the mountain racers. They never really stood a chance. When you practice for four years at something, forging your skills with fervent dedication, little can stand in your way. Keiichi was quickly deemed king of the mountain, and rivals would travel from all over the region to challenge him, only to see his taillights disappearing around the corner ahead of them, never to see them again. Go, bro. He was like, bro, like imagine, bro. You, you see this new guy, and you ask him, hey, you want to go on the mountain? He said, nah, 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 nah. He said, man, man, come on, come on the mountain. He was like, nah, 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 nah. All right, 
your loss. And then he comes back like, wait, wait, wait. I'll get on the mountain, but give me four years. Four years? Four years. You be like, all right, bro. Four years pass. He's come back in. He might have grew a little two inches in height, hair, you know, slit back a little bit. Got this new whip. He is like, you know what? I'm back. Four years later, I'm ready for the mountain. Ready for the mountain? Yeah, I'm ready for the mountain. Actually, let me make this more interesting. I want to go against all y'all on the mountain right now. It's like, all right, I gave you four years. You better cook. They get on the mountain. <laughs> Man's gone. Man's gone in like two minutes. He was adored by other Hashiria for his flamboyant racing style passing his opponents in curves while sliding sideways. Word of Tsuchiya-sama's abilities soon traveled down the mountains to the world of professional Japanese <laughs> racing. And in 1977, Keiichi would begin his life's work as a professional racing driver. But the soul of illegal mountain racing would never leave him. As you already know, this is the man responsible for bringing the drift sensation from the other side of the Pacific to our shores here in the United States. He's a D1 Grand Prix judge, the Drift King himself, Keiichi Tsuchiya. Tsuchiya knew the road ahead of him was long and difficult. Just like his successes as an outlaw mountain racer, his career as a pro driver would take a lot of time and dedicated practice. His humble racing debut began in the Fuji Freshman Racing Series. Which okay. is sort of a college sports version of touring car racing. Okay, that's You get right. to act like the professionals, but you're going to pay for everything yourself. What? Oh, boy, hold on, hold on. Hold on, buddy. That's a little bit much, all right? So you're saying, like, I got to pay for everything? Okay. But look at my man's, though. Look at my man's. Hold on, let me show you guys this. Let's go back. My man's is locked in. Time. Look at that. Hold on. Look at that. Those are eyes of a man who's locked in. Man's not seeing anything else, bro. He's on that road. He's just saying, you know what? I got to hit this next turf, bro. You can't even talk to him. He's just too locked in. And even though he was winning, he felt like he was being held back by these low horsepower rookie racing classes. So he went to his sponsors and asked for money to buy a new, faster car. They said, sure, win the entire championship and we'll give you a new car. So he did. <laughs> this man said, all right, there was, my man went up to the, like, the sponsor, but bro, I need a new whip. It was like, Okay, if you win the championship, just like, hey, he's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. Man's like, all right, locked in. So I won the championship with my new whip. And in 1984, he stepped out of the world of underpowered, unassuming racing cars and into the driver's seat of an all new, underpowered, unassuming racing car. But this would be a seat he would never leave for the rest of his life. Really? Hey, what's that, a Toyota? The 1985 Toyota Corolla GTS. A Toyota, dependable. A Corolla, affordable. Oh, the initial D-Whip. The initial D-Whip. A car for the street is powered by a new twin cam fuel injected. The Toyota Corolla GTS. A Toyota, dependable. This is the most, like, 19, like, what was it, 80s, 90s commercial. The 1980s were, well, for lack of a better term, we... <laughs> Don't, hold on. The 1980s were, well, for lack of a better term... Bro, I don't know, bro. Can someone please explain to me, like, what was the thought process behind this commercials you know the like not with these commercials but these things right here can someone please fill me in because what was the point of this um weird and the world of 80s japanese cars was no different car companies of the time were abandoning complex rear wheel drive platforms for simpler more fuel efficient front wheel drive cars mitsubishi mirage honda civics toyota tercels all a dismal sign hey, get... of the slow and depressing death of the sports car. A Honda Civic driver among them <laughs> was one last freedom fighter, a sports car for the masses. Well, before the Miata came along, hmm. the AE86 Corolla. For this generation, Toyota went insane. Instead Real. of just one new Corolla, they split the lineup in half. One was just another front wheel drive economy car, but parked next to it at a dealership would be a near mirror image. But this time, with a rear-wheel drive platform, sportier suspension, and a free-revving, fun-loving 1.6-liter engine, Ooh. the Hachi Roku, a plucky economy car with the heart of a champion. For our hero Keiichi, it was love at first sight. His racing prowess was forged on tight mountain roads. Tsuchiya-sama never cared for high horsepower, turbos, or gimmicks. To win, he believed you needed a vehicle you could trust. 
one that did what it was told and communicated back to the driver with solid inputs and delicate handling. Yeah. So Chia's competition A86 went by many names. Carrot Flashpoint, Karata, whatever you called it, you saw it cross the finish line first. Though yeah. underpowered and unassuming, Keiichi and his Carrot A86 dominated the Fuji Freshman Series for six championships leaving more powerful and advanced cars mm. in its dust. So what do you do when you're dominating the competition and no one can beat you? You have a little fun with it. Hey, hey. <laughs> my man is locked in. Hold on. Like his Hold on, can we look at my man's face? My man's locked in. Bro, I wish I could reach that point of locking in, bro. I, I could never do something like that, bro. I'm not even trying to glaze. But like, that's like, that's, that's, that's locking, locking in, bro. I'm sorry. Like his hero, Kunisan, Keiichi kept himself Aww. entertained on course by sliding mm -hmm. through corners, passing his opponents while graciously counter steering. It was probably really fun to watch, but must have driven the other competitors nuts. So Chiyosama's performance in the Advan 86 was so dominant, the Nismo team had him investigated for cheating. I mean, how else can you explain that this puny little hatchback was sliding around corners and still passing its competitors? Hey, that's a huge flex though. I always firmly believe in the philosophy that if someone says that you're cheating, but you're not, like if you're winning and they say, oh man, my man must be cheating or something. I think that's a flex. Like, I personally think that's a flex though. He of course wasn't cheating, he was just kind of a jerk. But the fans <laughs> loved it. Tsuchiya was winning so easily that he found it boring. So his antics got bigger and bolder, exaggerating his drifting, pushing the track limits, driving fans wild and pissing off the officials. Eventually, the officials had had enough of it and threatened to suspend his license. His on- <laughs> Bro, what? Man, was that good? <laughs> Track exploits led him to earn the title of Dordkin, or Drift King. The reputation and controversy around the Drift King inspired Option Magazine to reach out to Suchia. They thought, what if we were able to show everyone the wild driving style of the Drift King? So they set about following Suchia sama for weeks. Weeks. Riding along with him and filming him attacking Yusui Pass in his personal AE86. What they released is a time capsule. Mm. Roughly 20 minutes of oddly edited but superbly shot drifting masterclass. Raw sound, pure driving and few cuts. Oof. It was called Plusby. And it may seem almost timid now, but when it was created, nothing like it had been Plusby. And it may seem almost Shout out to Atlas. But when it was created, nothing like it had ever been released. The reason nothing like it had ever been released was, well, in Japanese culture, filming yourself committing crimes is not as popular as it is here in America. Woo! Ooh. As Plus B started. In Japanese culture, filming yourself committing crimes is not as popular as it is here in America. As All I'm gonna say about that is that my boy is gonna have a rough time with that insurance. Plus, we started making waves in the automotive scene. Authorities took notice and immediately demanded the VHS tapes be removed from store shelves. Now, of course, censorship rarely works. The controversy just made Plus B even more desirable, its content more taboo, and thus exciting to watch. And with that, Drifting had hit the main stage. In 1986, Carboy Magazine held what is believed to be the first drifting competition. And hot off the viral hit of Plus B, Keiichi and Daijiro of Option Magazine started their own drifting events in 1989. Ooh. They were known as Ikaten. Keiichi and Daijiro never took anything seriously. The Ikaten were meetups of poor car enthusiasts Jeez. let loose on racing tracks of Japan throughout the 90s. They had no real judging or points and accomplishments earned drivers the title of various sea creatures. With ranks like Jellyfish and Squid, the series got sillier as time went on, eventually <laughs> even inspiring Keiichi to adopt a cute octopus as his mascot for his parts Aww. company, K-Office. Keiichi would go on to become the judge of nearly every important drifting competition in Japan, including D1GP when it launched in the year 2000. 
Tsuchiya-sama would host best motoring vids, appear all over in popular culture, he created the Drift Bible, and was the supervisor the and allegedly Bible. inspiration for the anime Initial D. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I mean, it was kind of obvious, but I knew it. And the Drift Bible? Keiichi himself had essentially kickstarted the drifting revolution in Japan and subsequently the world. But if you asked him, he never meant to. He just drifted because it was faster and because it was more fun. So while eh. he rose to fame as the counter steering Dorikin, his hurts. heart always beat for the spirit of real competition, door to door racing, and it would be a heartbeat heard round the world. When I was racing, everybody knew that I would win. So to stop people being bored and fed up with the same old thing, I started drifting the car through the corners, much more than the other drivers, to keep people interested, and it improved the popularity of the sport. Even as Keiichi became a television popularity, a judge for a new form of automotive competition, Tsuchiya never left the driver's seat. He wow. continued to compete and win throughout the 80s, until it culminated with what must be a cornerstone moment for Tsuchiya-sama's life. He was invited to be Kunimitsu Takashi's co-pilot in his Group A Skyline GTR. Wow. Yes, the man who had inspired Keiichi so many years before to oversteer his way to the top was now going to be sharing his cockpit. Tsuchiya would commit himself oh fully God. to taking that team to the podium, eventually earning the duo a third place podium in Group A. The successes of the Kunimitsu racing team caught the attention of Honda, who were fielding wow. the new NSX GT2 in Le Mans. The GT2 was a monster. It was an NSX R that had been completely un Honda. 400 horsepower, wide bodied wow. in carbon fiber and aluminum, and revised and revamped from head to toe. Okay, in that okay. year's Le Mans, Team Kudamitsu would start from the pit lane, but 24 hours later, two laps ahead of the Callaway Corvettes, Tsuchiya and Kudamitsu would take home a class win. W, W. W, bro. W, W, W. After that, there were wins in Porsche 911s, failures in Dodge Vipers. Hell, Tsuchiya even drove a few NASCAR events. Ooh. His notoriety garnered the attention of team owners. They wanted Tsuchiya san in their cars. And it would all culminate in what Tsuchiya himself calls his greatest achievement. In 1999, a team of three Toyota GT1s would enter Le Mans. Alongside Tsuchiya was Toshio Suzuki and Ukio Katayama. Their pace from the outset was conservative. This was an endurance race after all, and the strategy worked. As laps went on, their faster competitors dropped out of the race. One even decided to fly out of the race. <laughs> Whoa. What the... Wait. Wait, 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 we need to rewind that. Faster competitors dropped out of the race. One even decided to fly out of the race. Bro, how does that even happen? What? And he didn't even like, he didn't even land like, straight forward or even trying to land anywhere in like the little area like he landed outside the like rails in the trees then near the end of the 24 hours the Crazy. toyota gt1 was battling team bmw for the top spot unfortunately in those final hours the gt1 suffered a tire puncture and would only take home second place but second place in the world's most difficult and prestigious race is not a bad high watermark in the following years, Tsuchiya would continue to race Supras and NSXs in the All Japan GT Championship. And then, after decades spent sliding through corner after corner, Tsuchiya Sama would hang up his jade green racing suit for good in 2003. A legacy of smiles, oversteer, and checkered flags behind him. Today, Keiichi Tsuchiya's life might be a bit slower paced than the days of Le Mans victories and he could tend tire shredding, but his yeah. heart beats just the same. From the moment he looked over that fence at Fuji Speedway to see Kunisan driving with flair, to standing atop a podium in a country thousands of miles away, Tsuchiya-sama has never lost his spirit. Hell, parked in his garage is his own personal A86, a wow. masterpiece of underdog engineering, and a shining reminder of what Keiichi himself means to the world. A quiet, humble, smiling champion. Never quite so serious in character, but always a fervent <laughs> and dedicated competitor. If you were lucky enough to meet Keiichi in person, you'd forget that he had led such a storied life, one of championships and being an icon for an entire motorsports movement. Tsuchiya's story is that of a foundation of an entire sport, an inspiration of a generation, and the competitive spirit of an entire nation. If you asked him, he would tell you that he's just another Japanese racing driver, 
but to those that have felt his influence throughout time, myself included, he is truly so much more than that. He is the Drift King. W video, bro. W video. That, that was a nice ending. Shout out to KG, bro. That's a goat. You feel me? That's a goat right there, bro. That's a goat. All right. That's a goat.